Hey everyone, Damien the Kung Fit Coach here, and today we're going to be talking about ankle mobility. Now before you shout boring, run away and go watch cat videos, let me tell you why it's so important. Now, lots of studies have shown that increasing your ankle mobility reduces your chance of injury, improves your balance and stability, and it also improves your athletic performance. Not only that, it will increase your long-term quality of life, it will reduce stiffness and it will reduce pain. And as if that wasn't enough, it's gonna make things like your squats and your lunges much, much better because you'll be able to get down to deeper positions. And even beyond that, it will make you a better martial artist as well. Now wait, how can ankle mobility make me a better martial artist? Well, you can better utilize and move through stances, you can increase your power and your range in your strikes. And not only that, just a few weeks ago in UFC 252, Sean O'Malley actually lost because of ankle injury. So if you can improve that mobility, improve that ankle strength, then yes, you will be more resistant. You'll have those extra attributes that will help you uh, perform your techniques and just generally be a better martial artist. So. Let's bulletproof those ankles. First thing we're gonna do is some ankle mobilization. For this, we're gonna sit down on the floor, or you can sit in a chair, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna cross one leg, pop the other ankle just on top of my thigh, and then I'm gonna work my foot through its full range of motion. So don't just flop it around like this. Really pull back, turn round, stretch through. Really work it as much as you can. You might want to move it just a little bit further out just to help make sure you've got the room, your heel doesn't hit up against um, your thigh too much. And once you've done it, a few circles in one direction, go back in the other and really try and make sure that you're getting full range of motion in all the different directions to mobilize that joint as much as you possibly can. Next thing we're going to do is stand up. Feet flat on the floor, about hip width apart. We're going to do external and internal tilts. So we're going to push our outer foot down to the floor, lift the inside of the foot up, and then come back down. You're going to do this slowly and methodically, you're not going to kind of uh, explode into it and rush through and risk pulling something. Just slowly twist through. Try and go out as far as you can and then come back in. And we're going to do 10 reps of this and then rest for a second, then go internal. So for this, exactly the opposite, we pull into the inside of the foot and lift the outside of the foot up. You do want to go careful on this, don't really pull in and uh, have the knees buckle in as well. The knees will move a little bit, but try and focus it in on the ankles. And the reason I say that is because if your knees aren't used to that position, being bent in like that can be quite painful for them. So we want to avoid that. The next thing we're going to do is stretch the calf, because that muscle is obviously pulling on the ankle. So if it's tight, it can restrict our mobility. So we're going to put the ball of our foot up on an elevated surface. Your heel can either be on the ground or lifted up like mine is. And then you want to try and pull the toes up towards the shin as much as possible by shifting your weight forward. So I'm going to keep this leg straight, sink my weight forward over my foot and I can even push with my standing leg just to give it a little bit more. If I push my hips back too much I'm going to start getting a stretch here in my glute. And obviously, stretching your glute is a good thing, but right now that's not our focus. So try and be a bit more upright with it and have the stretch really focused in on your calf. You might find that having your foot on the floor actually gives you a bit more leverage to get a bit more stretch in. So try both, see what works for you. For this next stretch, we're going to need a resistance band and an elevated surface. What we're going to do here is pop one foot up on this raised surface and we're going to take the resistance band and we're going to put it on the ankle and make sure it sits below 
the bony protrusions. So you've got one on this side, one on the other side, that's your tibia and your fibula. Sit just below there, and then we want it to pull down at at least a 45 degree angle. And obviously we want it to be taut. So in order to do that, I'm going to pop my knee on top of here. Need a little bit of resistance. You can do this standing and just put your foot on it, or you can do it kneeling like I am here. Key thing is, it stays below those bony protrusions, it pulls down, and it's a little bit taut. You also want it probably around about this thickness, too thin and it's going to dig in, too thick and it's going to cover too large of an area. What we're trying to do here is target the talus, which is a little bone in the ankle that slides back as you flex your ankle forwards. And sometimes this doesn't quite move properly, especially if you've had an ankle injury in the past. This area is often impacted, you get some restriction, and it really restricts the amount of mobility you can get in your ankle. So by placing this band, we're essentially forcing it to move in the right way. And then we go through reps. We move forward, and then we come back. We move forward, try and go as far as we can, pause a second, and come back. And you'll probably find you can actually get further doing this than you can without the band, because it is helping that talus move in the right way. So again, we're gonna do 20 reps of this. Extend, go into flexion, pause, and extend again. Just keep going through this, and then obviously we'll switch leg. Now that we've mobilized that joint a little, we can do some more deep stretching. So similar kind of position. We're gonna have one foot out in front and the other's gonna be behind us. But we're gonna open up to around about 90 degrees of our hips. Knees and toes gonna to be in line again. And again, we're gonna flex that foot. We're gonna take the knee over the toes. Now, what I really want you to think about here is trying to essentially get that knee as far forward as you can. You might get to the point where you're feeling stiffness in the front, in which case you definitely need to do more of those stretches with the band around the ankle. But what we want to try and get to is the point where actually you're feeling the stretch along the back as well, along the Achilles. To increase the intensity, so say you're getting to a certain point, you're feeling it a little bit, but not very much, you can push down slightly on your knee. You can also take your elbows on your knee and lean your entire body weight forward. Still keeping this leg on the ground and this foot on the floor. Don't let this heel come up, but as much your body weight as you can, lean forward over that, and then you should get a much deeper stretch through the Achilles. Really think about that heel being firmly planted on the floor. And then again, you can do it on the other side as well. Track that knee over the toes, sink a bit of weight into it, and stretch out through that back of the ankle. Now that we've stretched out our ankles a little bit, we're gonna do a bit of strengthening work. So first, quite simply, calf raises. We're gonna come up, slowly, hold at the top, and then slowly back down. And we're gonna do 20 of these with our feet facing forwards. And then we're gonna turn our feet out and do another 20. Again, slowly up, slowly down, pausing slightly at the top and then a final 20 with our toes pointing inwards. Now if you can't quite make it to that 20 reps, that's fine, but equally, if it's really easy for you, grab some kettlebells or dumbbells or any form of weight, hold them and go up and it'll make it a little bit more difficult. You can also, if you're feeling up to it, try doing this on a step, so then you can get a greater range of motion because you're coming all the way from this toe up position to that toe down position. Obviously do be careful doing that though, there's a risk of falling backwards, so I'd recommend just gently touching onto um, a wall, banister, whatever it might be, just to give yourself a little bit of extra balance. If you are gonna do a weighted version of that, that means you're potentially gonna be lopsided, so something like a weighted vest or some weights in a rucksack can uh, help free up your hands. But again, don't let it pull you backwards, try and make sure that you're staying balanced. Once you've done the calf raises, we're gonna do tibialis raises. Now this is exercising the front of the lower leg. 
For this, you want to lean your back up against the wall and step your feet out. Have a nice straight line in your body, other than your upper back where it's touching the wall. And you're just going to lift your toes up towards your shins, hold it, and down. Lift, hold, and down. Now you can adjust the difficulty of this by how far away your feet are from the wall. If you're really close, it's going to be easier. If you're going to be further out, it's going to be much harder because there's going to be more of your body weight and also you're going to be going through a greater range of motion. So as you get better at this, you want to try and get further and further away from the wall. Again, we're going to do 20 reps of these. The final exercise we're going to do to train the mobility and the strength in our ankles is just to squat down low. Now this has obvious applications for your weighted squats and your lunges because we're training that squatting motion. When I say squat down low, I really mean all the way down. So we're going to spread the feet a little bit wider than shoulders, just turn the toes out a tiny little bit and squat all the way down. Try and keep your back relatively upright and sink your bum all the way down to the floor. And this is where we want to try and get to. So we're upright, bum down, and we're stable. So we're not leaning all the way forward, we're not falling backwards, we're here, we're stable. Now to begin with, this might actually be quite difficult for you to get to because you don't have that strength and that mobility um, in the ankles, besides any matters about leg and, and hip strength. But often it's the ankles that can let us down. So what we do is we get an elevated surface. In this case, I've just got two weight plates. You can use books, uh, anything just to lift your feet up a little bit. I'm gonna put the heels on that elevated surface and then we're gonna squat down. And same again, get as low as we can, but I don't need as much ankle mobility for this. I've got less of an angle in the um, ankle joint. Because my heel is elevated, my toes aren't pulled as close to my shin. So I put this on the floor, See how that angle is increased by being on the floor. So this makes it a little bit easier. You can start relatively high with it, a couple of weight plates maybe, and then work your way down until you can get all the way down to that bottom squat position. Again, go for about 20 uh, second hold, keeping it consistent with these 20 reps here, and that will really test you to begin with but over time it will get easier and easier, at which point try and hold it for longer and longer. Greater mobility and strength in any part of the body is obviously a great thing. It's going to bring a whole host of improvements. But I promised you this was going to make you a better martial artist. So let's look a little bit about how that might be the case. Now I demonstrated with the low squat that the lower you get to the ground, the more ankle mobility you need. So when you think about things like stances, if you're gonna get low, you need that ankle mobility. Shubu, for example. If I'm quite high, it's quite a shallow angle between my upper leg and my foot, the ankle joint. As I get lower and lower and lower, see how that angle gets tighter and tighter and tighter until I'm all the way down here. Now, obviously I'm not gonna use a shubu all the way down here. This is uh, far too low, but even a perfectly standard shubu nice low thigh, we've got that big um, closing of the distance. I come up, the angle opens up, greater distance between my shin and my foot. So that increased ankle mobility will get us lower. And you may think, well, stances, who cares? Um, but they are applicable. Even if you don't use them explicitly as stances, if you're leaning back to defend, you want to sink your weight down to get away from an opponent's attack. Equally, when it comes to attacking, having that ankle mobility will increase your range, potentially increase your power. Why? Quite simply, I've got a certain amount of range here with my fist. As I bend my knee, see how much further forward my wrist goes. But watch the ankle. As I bend the knee, the ankle closes up, I need greater and greater mobility to get further and further. It's not always going to be applicable, obviously, but there are going to be occasions where that extra range that you can gain from having greater ankle mobility is the difference between hitting your opponent and not hitting your opponent. Equally, 
as I drop my knee forward, as I close up the ankle, my weight is sinking, and that means that I can deliver more of my body weight behind my strike. Again, not going to be applicable in all circumstances, but it can sometimes be useful. So we can hit harder, we can hit from further away, and we can retreat more, all because of our increased ankle mobility. Then finally, on top of that, we've obviously got the uh, resistance to injury, which is going to be a big factor in how well we perform. So if you improve your mobility, if you improve your strength, and the two go very much hand in hand, when you improve one, you do improve the other, you will become a better martial artist, you will have better squats, and just generally, your quality of life uh, will probably be better for a longer period of time, because you're less likely to have falls, because you're more stable, you're less likely to have aches and pains. Now I've referenced a few studies down below in the description that give you some of the more details on this. If you are interested, you can read them, check them out, uh, see that I'm actually backing all this stuff up with science. I'm not making it up. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, please like, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.